Hello, mighty companions. Welcome to A Course in Miracles on Facebook Live. It's great to see you here. It's great to see those of you who are here with me in person. So the first thing I want to ask you to do is take a breath because we're going to talk about how to use, how to leave judgment and condemnation behind you. If there's something from the past you know you need to let go of that's stopping you from having the peace that you want right now, that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to cover the part of the Course in Miracles that's talking about finding the present, finding your peace right now, finding your happiness right now. It's called Finding the Present. We're going to be on page, if you got the Course in Miracles book, the blue book, we're going to be on page 251. Page 251 in the text. Page 251 in the text. Page 251 in the text, chapter 13. Chapter 13, section 6, Finding the Present. Ah, are you tired of letting some something that's just happened in the past? It could be this morning. It could be last night. It could be last week. It could be two years from the past. But you, you know you're still hanging on some stuff that you feel like you need to let go of. And that's what I've been listening to, what the Course in Miracles has been telling me to do about that. And that's what we're going to continue on. So first of all, I'd like for you to take a breath. It's important to get centered, especially if you've been out in the crazy world, the lab as I call it, our school that gives us an opportunity to keep choosing every day whether we're going to choose for love or we're going to choose for conflict. That's the only two choices that we have all the time that the Course in Miracles is telling us that we need to learn to recognize. You're either going to choose to spend your day upset about stuff or you're going to choose to spend your day in a way that you give yourself some peace. These are the guidelines from the course. I do it every week because I need to remember it every week because sometimes I think I need to believe something before I can start using it. So it says remember only this. You don't have to believe the ideas. You don't have to accept the ideas. You don't have to even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist, some of the ideas. Some of the ideas you may be tempted to resist. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe, some of the ideas in the Course in Miracles you will find hard to believe. The Course in Miracles teaches that the way that you learn a new way of looking at things is through repetition. So I use a lot of repetition, and also the Course in Miracles says that it's more important that you remember the truth than to understand the truth. Most people spend their, waste a lot of their time thinking that they need to understand something before they can use it. Do you have to understand the laws of aerodynamics before you take a jet plane somewhere? No, but for some reason, people tend to think before they can use the truth, they have to understand everything about it. And if I don't understand it, it won't work. Well, obviously, you cannot understand jet planes and still they work. So the Course in Miracles is saying the same thing. It's not important that you understand as it is important that you follow the instructions and do what you're told to have the peace and love that you want. That's what's important. So when I do the Course in Miracles, my focus on it after 40 years of teaching it and learning it, my focus is on the practical application of these ideas in every area of your life. So if you really want to help give yourself a halfway shot of being able to listen to this whole class, then you need to think of something in your life that you know you need to let go of. You need to think of a specific person or a specific situation or circumstance that you're dealing with, or you got a 90% chance you're gonna space out or go to sleep or be unconscious. So I want you to know, unless you got a 100% totally peaceful, perfect existence in every area of your life, there's something or somebody that you need to let go of from the past. So the Course in Miracles says, we're gonna start at paragraph six, on page 251, paragraph 6. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being online. Thank you for, for watching from around the world. I really appreciate the feedback that I've been getting from so many people. It's very, very uh, encouraging and inspirational when people let you know that what you've been trying to do has had a positive effect in, on them and in their life. So the Course in Miracles says, do me slowly. And that's the way I'm going to do it. But I'm going to do it in a question and answer format. So what is it that the Course in Miracles says that is really behind you? It says, well, what's really behind you is judgment and condemnation. 
your condemnation and your judgment is really behind you. For instance, if you felt some kind of judgment or condemnation towards somebody just last night, well, that happened last night. So doesn't that mean it's behind you? That that judgment, that that condemnation and that upset happened yesterday, then it's really behind you. Unless you do what? Unless you bring it with you. So I got upset about something last night. It's really behind me unless I bring it with me into this moment with you today. So whatever it is, you might think you have some separation or upset about anything. It doesn't even have to be a person. It could be a situation that you're dealing with. Unless you bring it with you, what are you going to see? Unless I bring the judgment and condemnation with me, then I'm going to see that I'm really free of it. Whatever I was upset about last night, unless I bring it with me this morning, it's really behind me. So it really means I'm really free of whatever it was that upset me last night. Somebody, uh, let's say somebody bumped your car. Okay, that happened last night. That upset you. You had some judgment behind it. You had some condemnation behind it. So unless you bring the judgment and condemnation behind it this morning, you will see that you are free of it until you bring it back. Until you bring it back. Until you focus back on the thing you were upset about, then you're free of it. So when people tell me they, they want to be free of their conflict, they want to be free of their anger, but they're carrying it around, and focusing in on it, then they're not going to be free. It's like somebody saying, I feel bad and I want to feel good, but I want to keep thinking the same things I'm thinking is making me feel bad. But somehow or another, that, you're going to tell me how to feel good, Earl. Now, I want to hang on to the same negative thoughts from the past that I've been having, but somehow you're going to say something to me that's going to change my whole life. I can tell you what the court says you should think to change your life, but you're not going to have that peace that is promising until you do what? Use the ideas. That's why the Course in Miracles says it's the use of the ideas that give the ideas meaning to you. So you can go to a million classes. You can, you can watch a million videos. You can go to a million workshops. But I promise you, absolutely nothing is going to happen from staring at the recipe book and never getting the ingredients out and putting the cake in the oven. I say that every week because I talk to many, many people, and that's one of the most common errors that I see is that people expect their life to change without their thoughts changing. I'm going to keep my same old habits, but I'm going to get a different result. So, of course, it's telling me, if you're upset about something right now, if you're judging something right now or somebody right now, and you have a condemnation toward them right now, unless you keep bringing it with you, you're going to see that you're free of it. So how do you become free of the condemnation? That's what people go with. Well, how do I become free of the condemnation? What does the next sentence say? Look lovingly. What are you supposed to look lovingly on? The present. I know I got mad about what happened this morning. I know I got mad about what happened last night. But right now, in this room with you, I could appreciate this time that I have right now with you. I could look what? Lovingly on right now. I could look peacefully on right now. Unless I do what? Keep on bringing up what upset me last night or what upset me this morning. If I keep bringing that into this moment, will I feel good? No. Okay. So what is it in this moment that I can appreciate? I can appreciate this incredible weather that we're having today because I thought I was going to melt from water. There's been so much rain in Denver. It's been unbelievable. If the weather is beautiful, you all are beautiful. Got some cool people in the house. Got lots of people online that's watching. Uh, in this moment, I'm safe. I'm not hungry. Nobody's attacking me. There's no bombs dropping in the room. Nobody's shooting at me. In this moment, this moment is cool. Unless I do what? Think about what happened to me this morning. Think about what happened to me last night. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to bring judgment and condemnation with me. I love that line. He says, look globally upon the present because... The present holds the things that are forever true. So what's true is right now. So then it goes on to tell us that all healing lies within now. If I'm going to let go of that grievance or that thing that's causing me upset, then I have to do it now because 
now is the one thing that will always continue. The one thing that you can always count on for the rest of your life, from this moment to the rest of your life, the one thing you can count on is you're going to keep having a now, after 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 a now. You're going to keep on having nows. I used to say in my classes when I first started teaching, when do spiritual cats want it? And I would say, meow. <laughs> that's when the spirit, that's when, do, when as a spiritual being, when do I want, I don't want love in the present, in the future, excuse me. I don't want love in the future. I don't want happiness in the future. I don't want friends in the future. I don't want forgiveness in the future. Uh, I want to have the healing of now. Then the court says, I'm going to tell you why you want to focus in the now. He says, why is it? He says, because now extends to all aspects of the family of God at the same time. In other words, right now, we are able to reach each other right now. So right now enables us to reach each other. I can't, meet, I can't reach you yesterday, and I can't reach you tomorrow, but everybody that exists on the physical plane right now could be reached when? Right now. So right now extends to all of us. So what does that do mean? Well, if we're all in right now, then the Course says that means you can all reach each other. You're sitting in front of me right now, Trudy. So right now, I can reach you because we are right here, right now. So if you're ever going to affect a change in anything, the only time you can heal it, correct it, get past the grievances is when? Right now. Right now. I'm going to forgive my mother next week. But that's not me forgiving my mother right now. I'm thinking about what my mother did to upset me last year, or my father did to upset me last year, but that's not being able to heal with them right now. So the reason why I like to go through the book, and I always teach out of the book, is because really most people who, many people who study the Course in Miracles never read it. So a lot of times I've found from talking to people that the first time they've heard anything this book says is actually when they come to my class or listen to my class. So sometimes I assume that I'm saying this to somebody that's already read it or that's already studying it. And then I have to remember, no, pretty mo I would venture pretty most of the people that are watching you have never read that paragraph that you're in. So it's really their first time hearing it, which means it may have the same effect as it does when you're trying to hammer a nail into a board. The first blow very seldom does it. Usually, if you're going to hammer something in, what do you do? Plop, 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 plop. Well, that's the, same, that's the exact same way another way of looking at things work. You're not going to change your way of looking at your relationships in one lecture or one chapter of a book or telling yourself what I've said today one time. You, you know that. So what do you want to do? I want to be around people who want to hear the truth over and over and over and over and over again. I want to be around people who talk the truth to me over and over and over again. I want to be around people that when something comes up between us, we'll go to the truth in order to handle what's come up between us, rather than bring the judgment and condemnation into this moment. Because that's what keeps the argument and the separation going. Because somebody's waiting for somebody else to say they're going to be different for them to be happy. Right? So the Course in Miracles tells us, now let me tell you uh, when the present is. He says, the present is before time was and will be when time is no more. You're going to always have a present moment. You don't know this yet, and you may be shocked to find this, and you may think what I'm saying is crazy, but the truth teaches that you're still going to have a now even when you're no longer in time. You're still going to have a present even when you're no longer in the body. You're still going to exist even when you are no longer in the body. The body is controlled by time. The Course in Miracles teaches that everything in this world is controlled by time because everything in this world has a beginning and everything in this world has an end. Everything in this world has a beginning, everything in this world has an end. Everything that begins in this world is going to end. Everything in this world is going to end. Any relationship that you form is going to end. Anything you're in in this world, even if it's death that seems to end the relationship, there's nothing in this relation in this world that doesn't end. That's why the Course says it's the world of time, because the world of time 
is a place where there are beginnings and endings. We met, we had a real cool experience, and then it seemed to have come to a con conclusion or a completion. You bought that car, you drove it for a long time, then you let it go. Your body, the way your body looked now and the way it looked 10 years ago has changed. It had a beginning and it ended. There's nothing in this world that will not change and there's nothing in this world of form that will not end. So I'm no longer fighting what's perceived as aging. Because my body had a beginning and my body's gonna have an end. So I need to tap into and tune into people who will love me regardless of what my body looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you're younger, that's not such a big deal because your body is such a great bait. That goes by the Course of Miracles says, the body, you, you all use the body as bait to catch a better fish. And if you don't think your bait is up to snuff, you go to the gym. You got to get the better bait because in this world, it's not. It's what you look like. It's not who you are, it's your character. You know what I mean? So the Course in Miracles is saying to us that in the present, everything is eternal because in the present, everything is one. Uh, our continuity, there's no ending to our continuity. The, the Course in Miracles is a spiritual teaching. 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 The purpose of the Course in Miracles is to get rid of all the blocks to you recognizing that you are loved, that you are loving, that you are lovable, that you are spirit. And to teach you how to let go of all the blocks that keep you from recognizing how loved, how lovable, how spiritual, you are. The Course in Miracles also says something else radical, those Course in Miracles students out there listening. You didn't create yourself. You did not create yourself. You did not create yourself. So what that was, does that mean that you must have a creator? Something thought you up. Have you ever thought about that? You, you, are, you exist. So that means something wanted you to. Hello? Mm -hmm. So when a baby is born, the parents take care of the baby until the baby can take care of itself. You have a spiritual parent that's there to take care of you until you learn how to use your spiritual powers and mental powers to take care of yourself. The Course in Miracles says we are babies. We are like baby gods, baby spiritual beings, learning the powers of manifestation and creation. And we have the same powers and abilities as our parent. Right? right? You assume that a robin gives birth to robins and the robins can fly, just like their parents could. But that's what the Course in Miracles is saying. You all are children of God. You are children of a higher, greater spiritual power. That means you have the same power to create as God does, but you are not God. And you don't know you are creating every single thing that is happening to you because you are a creator. And then people go, well, what, well how am I creating everything that's happening to me? Well, you're creating it through your thoughts. You're creating your experience through your thoughts through your feelings, and through your beliefs. So your life is a reflection of your beliefs. But your life and your perception of your life is a reflection of two kinds of beliefs. Your perception of your life and the life that you're having right now is a reflection of the beliefs you're conscious of. And what other kind of beliefs? The ones you're not conscious of. And most people are not conscious of most of their beliefs. The best analogy you could ever hear is an iceberg, because we all are familiar that the iceberg is bigger under the water than it is on the top, right? So your iceberg is huge beneath your consciousness. You have beliefs about yourself that you don't even realize you have. The Course in Miracles says you have beliefs about yourself that you don't know you have. You have unloving beliefs about yourself you don't know you have, and you have some loving beliefs about yourself that you don't know you have. 
you say you have thoughts of attack and anger and grievances that you haven't completely left but let go of, and you also have thoughts of love and peace. Of course, it's saying you are not really aware of most of your thoughts. So if a person wants to get in touch with their thoughts, what do they do? The Course says, all you have to, the Course of Miracles says, all you have to do is do this. What I'm looking at are my thoughts. Everything you're looking at is a reflection of your thought because you're the one determining how you see it. Does that make sense? You are the one, you are looking at your thoughts. All that, all that craziness that we think we see in the world, that is a reflection of our crazy thoughts. People being kind sometimes and being cruel sometimes. We have thoughts of being kind sometimes and we have thoughts of being cruel sometimes. There's nothing that I'm looking at in the world that is not a projection from my own mind and a projection from my own thoughts. So the Course is telling us that the now is not separated by the past. The now always is. The, the past, your past does not keep you from having a right now that you could do it differently, and your future doesn't stop you from having a right now that you could do it differently. Uh, only the past can separate. That's an interesting sentence. The Course of Miracles says, only the past can separate. So why do I still feel separate from my dad? I'm, I'm thinking about what my daddy did to me in the past when I was young, right? So that's making me feel what? Separate from my dad right now. So it's the past that separates us. If you want to wonder why you're still separate from somebody, y'all still don't get along, or you still can't heal, both of you or one of you, are still bringing whatever happened in the past into the present and then condemning that person. So I'm taking what my father did in the past right now and I'm condemning them right now and so I still feel separate from my father right now. So if you have anybody in your life that you're feeling separate from right now, that's why you're feeling separate from them. Why, are you, why am I feeling separate from them, Earl? Because you're still thinking about whatever it was that upset you that you think they did, and you're bringing it into the right now. That's why you still don't like them. You, it's not a past reason in the sense you'll find out that you don't like somebody. You don't like somebody because of what you're telling about yourself about them now. Uh, the last time you were upset with somebody, did you run this through in, in your mind? Did you go through this? Did you, I'm bringing it back. Okay, that's why we're studying. In case you're wondering why we're studying, <laughs> if that's why. So that we can remember. Now, here's the problem as a teacher. The Course has already told you that a person who believes they're guilty and don't believe and they're insecure and they, didn't ra they weren't raised to really value themselves, and they said they dealt with a lot of criticism and judgment, which is most normal people, uh, then they are still focusing all their attention on the pain and the suffering that they think they went through in the past. And so they're using their childhood and everything they went through in the past to still make them feel separate, even from everybody else. I know people that just because they went through stuff in the past, they, they feel socially shy and awkward. What are they doing? They're walking into a room, a social gathering, not talking to anybody because of what, what happened to them and the way they were programmed in the past. And then they experience people not talking to them because they are not talking to people then they leave the party and say, see there, people never want to talk to me. And I always remember that the Course in Miracles taught me, see I do practical application of the Course, y'all. I, I, I don't do abstract theory for an hour. So those who need to talk about abstract stuff, I might not be your teacher. I want to know how I can apply this to the relationships that I have in my life right now. And, I'm, I'm, and that's who my students, they, they, they want to know how can I take these principles and use it in my life. So that's why I use these kind of examples. So the truth is, you can do that about your childhood. It doesn't have to even be about a person. You can do it about, about jobs you've had in the past. Think that you can't have a really good one because in the past you didn't. So, or, if you, or if I'm a black person and it looks like I, I dealt with the prejudice of a person, then me to assume that the next time I go in a job and, the bo and, and my boss is, uh, has a white body, and then I, as, a, as, a, as a being in a black body, that I had what I thought of as prejudice toward me, then the temptation would be for me to, what, bring that with me and assume that every white person that I met 
was going to also be prejudiced. You see what I'm saying? And then I deal with you as if you're prejudiced, and you might be my greatest advocate. But I'm over that because I can't trust no white people because of what I because I, I you know I was up on the cross one time. Okay. So, but I do a much better job of crucifying myself than Ku Klux Klu Klan could have ever done. Okay. Nobody's better at punishing Earl than Earl because nobody else is as devoted to it. That's deep, isn't it? <laughs> so why am I saying this? Because we need real life situations in order to make this real. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to meet a new person that happens to be in a white body and just automatically assume that they're against me because I'm in a black body based on what I grew, went through growing up in the South back in the 60s doing segregation. That's, the, that's true about everybody and everything you're upset about right now. That's the dynamic. So the course is saying to us, but right now you can reach each other. Right now, I can shoot out love to everybody, regardless of what color their bodies are. Right? How, and then, of course, well, how do you how do you give how do you love everybody? Well, the first thing you got to realize is that it doesn't take any effort to love everybody. It takes effort to make everybody special. Because love doesn't require anything but full appreciation and letting people be free to make their own choices. To not be there to attack them, abuse them, or hurt them in any kind of way. To see them as in union with you and one with you. Giving them to God. Giving them to the higher power. So you're not even personally responsible for taking care of them. When you love somebody, you're personally responsible for helping them remember they are loved. And when you love somebody, you're trying to give them to God and to spirit. Because you know God and spirit could do a much job, better job of helping them than you can. Then, if there's something for you to do, the Course in Miracles teaches that spirit will tell you what that is. But in the vast majority of people, you're not going to be asked to do anything. You're going to be just asked to think the truth around them. They may hate themselves. You think that they deserve love. They believe that they can't be happy. You believe it's possible for them to be happy. They believe that they have some type of lack you remember that abundance is their natural state. In most cases, the only thing that you're being asked to do is to use your mind to remember love and the truth because they're using their mind to keep themselves unhappy with anger, guilt, and grievances, and fear. So in most cases, your job is just to be the one that's sane in the middle of craziness. But it doesn't require that you say anything to anybody. Because when people are angry and upset, you're not talking to them. What? No. Any, anytime you're talking to a person that's angry and upset, you're talking to the ego. You're talking to the concept of themselves that they're having at that moment. You're not really talking to a person. You're talking to a mood, a concept, an opinion, or where they think they are in that moment. So your job especially if things are escalating or things are getting more angry or upset, your job is to be quiet, take a deep breath, and ask your inner self what it is you need to say, if anything. You, I'll say it again. If you're in a heated situation and you're misperceiving each other at any level and you know you are hooked and you know they are hooked, then you need to be quiet and breathe and ask for another way to look at it. And remember this, A Course in Miracles, especially the workbook, is full of other ways to look at it. You don't have to figure out, what's the new way I need to look at my mama? You need to look at your mama as calling for love. You need to look at your mama as entitled to miracles. You need to look at your mama as needing forgiveness. In other words, there's a lot of different ways you can see your mama. But you might not be doing it because you can't think of them because you have so many grievances. And that's why you go to the book. That's why you go to the book. That's why you go to the book. Because the Course will give you the things that you are to tell yourself when you're crazy. And it's like a fire drill. It's much better to practice these ideas and read these ideas and study these ideas when you're not mad. 
rather because then you almost like muscle memory. When you find yourself getting upset, these ideas will start coming to you more and more automatically. And the main idea that needs to come to you when you're upset is shut up. <clears throat> when you're mad and, and the more you communicate and the more separation is happening, shut up. Be quiet. Go within. Ask for another way to look at it. The other way to look at it is any spiritual group book. Any not, doesn't have even have to always be the course in Merit Rook Coach. It's just the one because it's my path. So you can go, but go to something beside you, your ego. Do not go to your figuring it out while you're mad. Okay, I'm telling you, don't act like because what is this about? Finding the present, right? So what is it that the present offers you? Because I'm the only one to do stuff if I know what's in it for me. So what is the present offering you? He says the president is off the president. The present is offering your brothers in the light that would unite you with them and free you from the past. So right now, you all, I love it. Make the course practical. What is this moment offering you? It's offering me you. This moment is offering me you. And also it's offering you, me, all of us are here in this moment, in the truth. We're studying the truth. And what does the truth do? It unites. So how can you tell when you're really in a situation and a misunderstanding and you all are really beginning to get past it and practicing the truth? The way you will know is you'll feel more united. You'll feel more connected. If you so what does that mean if you're communicating and you're feeling more separate. It means you're not looking at each other in the light. So then, then the man goes, well, what is the light? The Course in Miracles says the light is the truth. So that means that I'm not uniting with my mother because I am not seeing the truth of my mother, that she is spirit and she is love and she deserves love just as much as I deserve love. And that would free us both from the past. You used to drink. You don't drink anymore. I'm not going to hold against you what you did while you were drinking. Because that would be me bringing condemnation and judgment into the present. In the present, I can reach my father who used to drink and see that, see that in the truth, which that was his call for love and his call for help and his call for healing. That would make me not have so many grievances toward my father and so I would be uniting with my father. So how can you tell when you've actually united with somebody? You're free from the past, and neither one of them are bringing up to you again what you did. That's how you know when the grievance is still there. You're talking to somebody, and they're still talking about what you did. Then you know that they are not freeing you from the past, because the past is what's gone, 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 gone. That's what past means, gone. It happened. It's gone. It's happened. It's gone. Now, if I want to perpetuate the separation, if I want to keep the anger between us going, wouldn't I just keep bringing up the past over and over? Right? But, but my mind will tell me I'm doing that so I won't be hurt. But the truth is I'm doing that so I can keep the separation between us going. I want to see justification for not forgiving my father because I think that's letting my father off the hook for what my father really did to me when I was a kid. So I can't forgive my father because if I forgive my father, that's like telling my father it was okay for you to abuse me. Follow me? People tend not to want to forgive because they think it's letting somebody else off the hook for what they did to them. But they forget that that grievance is only affecting them, that the other person doesn't feel your anger. The other person doesn't feel your anger. The other person doesn't feel your anger. The other person doesn't feel your upset. Only you do. So take the course of line by line. So what is the question then that Jesus of A Course in Miracles is asking us? Well, would you then hold the past against them? So let's make it practical. So what I, I'm trying to forgive my father, so would I still hold the gone against my father? He says, well, you can keep holding the past against another person, but if you do, that's you choosing to remain in the dark. That, that, what that means is, oh, I'm making sure that I stay in the fear. I'm making sure that I stay in the unhappiness. Yeah, yeah, I, I can keep on holding your past against you, 
but it's going to keep me remaining in the past. Because if I'm thinking about the past every time I'm with you, then I'm remaining in the past. I want a new relationship with my kids, but I keep thinking about all the things that I think I went through with my kids in the past. Well, we're going to keep in the past. We're going to stay in the past. Well, then how am I going to have a new relationship with my kids? The Course in Miracles never states something that if you won't keep going into reading, he won't explain to you exactly what he means. So the Course in Miracles, I have to remember as a student of the Course in Miracles that they, the Course in Miracles wasn't asking me to, to interpret it. <laughs> it wasn't asking for my wisdom. It was trying to tell me what was going on, whether I like it or not. Like, like just, whether you like it or not, yeah, you can keep on holding that grievance against your father, Earl, but if you keep on bringing what he did or didn't do into the present moment, then you're going to keep staying in the past and y'all never going to get be anything but separate because it's the past that makes you feel separate. So if you're ever going to, ever going to, ever going to feel peace with that person again, you're going to have to focus on right now. And right now, your father isn't doing anything to you and you're not doing anything to your father. He's not even in the body. That really guarantees he's not doing nothing to you. So. So if you got a grievance towards your father, it's because you keep bringing what you think you went through in the past into the present, still making you feel separate from your father, even though your father isn't even in the body. So you can forgive people that are dead, even though death doesn't exist in spirit. It just exists in this world. This world was made out of the idea of death. This world comes from the belief of immortal beings that they're temporary. So the ones you think you're temporary, then you create a, a world that you live in full of temporary things. And that's why we're in a world of temporary things. Then you choose which of those temporary things are innocent to do and what those temporary things are that you could do that's guilty and sinful. So then you make it up and then you assign your morality to it and then you crucify yourself for breaking rules you the one made up. You're a bad person for smoking a cigarette, then every time you pick up one, you're going to crucify yourself about it, and every time you condemn somebody else about it, you're going to crucify yourself about it because you've already decided it's bad. So you're the last one that can smoke. But if you've already said that's a wrong, bad thing, so you'll probably punish yourself for doing it. I, morality is made up. Morality is made up. Morality is made up. Mor universal laws you cannot break. You know, you know, the laws of aerodynamic airplanes can count on it. That's why so many of th thousands of flying today. You can count on it, right? So anything you see that's true somewhere but not true somewhere else is man-made. Anything you tell me that's a custom in America that's not a custom in India, then you know people made that custom up. People made that morality up. In some cultures, you know, having many wives is cool. Nobody has a problem with that. In some cultures, that idea you go to jail. So that means it's made up. The whole thing is made up. It's made up as far as the plurality in relationships, and it's just as made up as far as the monogamy of the relationship. It's all made up. But I don't care whether the person lives in India or the person lives in Denver, if they jump out of a the house, they're not going to fall up. The law is going to work for everybody equally. So a smart person tries to get in touch with universal law. Because if they get in touch with universal law, they're getting in touch with what they can count on at all times. Which is what? Your thoughts are going to make your perception a reality. Your thoughts are going to create your reality. That's true for everybody, whether, rather, whether they know it or not. Whew. Woo. Thank you for helping me hear what I need to remember so that I won't crucify myself all the time. And I hope it's helpful to you too. But me, I love hearing this because I, I forget. I forget. And now, how I know, how you know when you've forgotten? You're back upset again. How can you know when you've forgotten? You're not happy. If you're not happy, you've forgotten the truth. If you're not happy right now, you've forgotten the truth. If you're broke right now, you've forgotten the laws of abundance. If you see yourself as not being healthy right now, you have forgotten the laws of healing and the laws of health. Anything that you're unhappy about is a reflection of some rule that you are forgetting to obey. So if you keep on choosing to remain in the past with this person that I'm talking about, 
then that means you are refusing to accept the truth that's being offered to you that Earl has given you. Earl has been sharing the Course in Miracles and giving you the truth. Now, if you choose to remain in fear and sadness and upset, then you're going to keep bringing up what you think somebody did to you in the past. And that's going to be you refusing to accept the truth that's being offered to you right now through Earl. But this light, this truth that I'm giving you, that gives you vision, is freely given, but it also has to be freely received. I'm giving you the way out of everything that's causing you pain and separation with your father, Earl, but uh, you have to be willing to, I'm giving it to you for free, so you just have to be willing to receive the answer for free. But you, if you really want to be happy all the time, then you have to also accept the answer without putting a limit on it. In other words, if I want to be free of all my grievances and not just grievances with my father, then I've got to apply this to my aunt, my uncle, my friend, my boss. You see what I'm saying? He says the acceptance must not be limited. You, you've got to accept the truth, but you, want, you also want to be able to practice it. And you're not going to pull it off all the time. You're not going to pull it off all the time. And when you first try to not bring the past into the present, you might fall on your face and you might feel angry and upset. That is okay. I don't know about you, but when I first learned how to ride a bicycle as a child, I didn't just jump on it and drive up, ride off. I failed. But I wanted to ride a bicycle bad. And so I wanted to ride the bicycle bad enough to do what? <clears throat> Get up every time I would fall. And I'd share with my clients that. I said, look, you know, the, the Course in Miracles teaches the way you get past an obstacle is through the attraction of the thing beyond the obstacle. I wanted to ride a bicycle. So falling down, I was willing to deal with that and keep on trying to ride the bicycle because my desire to ride the bicycle pulled me past me being stopped by falling. But don't you realize that if I was jabbing myself and didn't really want to ride the bicycle, the first time I failed, I would have stopped? That's how you know you don't really want something. It's the first time you have some kind of obstacle or block, you give up. That's, that means you didn't really want it in the first place. Because you should want me enough that you are willing to go beyond any separations that come between us, and I'm willing to come beyond any separation, go beyond any separation that, that come with you so that we can get back to the oneness that we want to have. So in every relationship, the only thing that's being revealed is whether there's real love there or not in that moment. And you have to know the difference between real love and fake love. So you want to know a quick sweeping definition of fake love? Everything humans give each other. Everything humans generally give each other is fake love. Okay, people are, what is fake love? What what people give to you? You know, you know, the love the love that is a bargain. It's a love that's a bargain. I'm giving you love based on what you do and how you act. And when you're not acting that way or being that way, I'm going to take my love back. That's fake love. That's special love. That's the way special love operates. So, so real love is easier than special love because special love is all these expectations. And so you're going to be busy trying to control somebody, and that's hard work. Real love is you letting everybody be exactly as they are knowing that the universe and the law of attraction is going to draw to you the perfect people in your life that you're supposed to have. So you don't have to go out hunting for nothing. But you still might go and put your, uh, what you call it on the dating sites, and, and, and put your profile. But you're doing that as a symbolic gesture to show that you're willing to have a relationship. That's like you saying to the universe, okay, I'm going to join this social media site because this is symbolic that I'm willing to have new friends. And I'm willing to have you. I'm letting the universe know I'm sincere about this because I'm doing something that symbolizes I'm willing to have it. Right? I say I want to go dancing. I think I don't know how to dance. I'm taking dance classes as a symbolic gesture to show I'm willing to dance. And here's the other law, because I'm giving you these principles. These principles work in every circumstance. Another principle is, he says, is the only thing that's missing in any situation is what you haven't given. And that really riles my, up my ego. Because I know I gave my so-and-so. I know I gave my devotion. I know I gave... Said, Whatever you see is missing is what you think you were not giving. And when the Course says that, it says, he's he's, in that particular context, he's talking about faith. He says the only thing that's missing in any situation is the faith that you haven't given. But that law applies to anything. 
Because all universal laws apply to everything. That's what makes them universal. There are no exceptions. Remember, there's a no exception rule. If there's one exception, then you know that what you're dealing with isn't the truth. If one person is excluded from the love, then it's not real love. As long as I'm only concerned about whether my children eat and not whether your children eat too, then I still don't know what real love is. Because real love would want all children to eat, not just mine. So anything that's fake is always something that's just for you. Anything that's just for you is fake. What does that mean, Earl? It means it's something that's going to begin and it's something that's going to end. Because only what we experience in time is what's not real. So I'm telling you, I want to love, I, I believe when your prayers are answered, I believe that speaks to the possibility of my prayers being answered. I believe if God or the universe would come through for you, I want to believe God or the universe would come through for me. So even we realize we think of God or love as something that should be given to everybody equally. That no one should be left out. Everyone should have love. Everyone deserves love. But when people hear that, it seems overwhelming because they can't figure out how they're going to love everybody and they can't even love one person without a lot of challenges. So people kind of pull back from that idea because, again, they think they're the ones that's responsible for loving everybody, because they see love as a responsibility and a sacrifice, because that's what the world teaches us, that love is sacrifice. And who wants to have a lot of people they're sacrificing to? So we just try to limit to as, our love to as few people as possible, so that you're just sacrificing for one or two people, maybe five, a family. Because we've been taught that love is sacrifice, that if you love somebody, you give up what you want for them, and you put their needs ahead of yours. Anybody ever heard that? Okay. So the Course is telling us that are you willing to have all your relationships healed? Are you willing to let go of the past against more than one person that you might have to let go of the past? Are you ready to get out the past so you can be free? Well, how do you do that? Well, he says, accept the truth, the light that's being offered to you. Then you go, well, where is this truth? Where is this light? Well, as a Course in Miracles teacher, I'm going to tell you that the truth and the light for some people is a Course in Miracles. That's where you're going to get the truth. That's where you're going to get the light. Uh, and then accept what it's saying without limit because we're in one still dimension of time. That's what the Course says, when you're in the now, you're in one still dimension of time that does not change because now never changes. So if, you, so if I say I'm in now, then it never changes. I'm always in the now. How many of you have had a now as long as you remember? <laughs> right. You, and the Course in Miracles is saying you will always have a now. Even when your body is gone, you're still going to have a now. But then guess what the possibility of your next now would be. Let's, let's pretend there is no death and you were going to the next place that you're going. Do you know what that's going to be? It'll be a reflection still of your consciousness, your mind, because that's what's creating everything you see and perceive. It's deep, isn't it? So the only thing you really take with you, the only thing a person takes with them when they leave the physical plane is their consciousness, their thought. So your mind is making this experience that you're in right now, but your mind is also going to make the next experience that you're in. So I love trying to change my mind and make my mind more sane and loving, even though I'm going to have my glitches and my, hic my hiccups. I'm not perfect either. Because I know when I die, they're not going to, I, I, can't take my car, I can't take my car with me. I can't take a special relationship. That's what's happening now. It's too many people dying and trying to take so many people with them. And we call it mass shootings. A mass shooting is someone trying to take everybody out with them and also trying to be special because they haven't really been special their whole life and so they'll at least be special through the notoriety. The, the people, they would be, I think the news media, me, this is my own personal thought, but I, I believe the news media would be shocked at how much mass shootings would go down if they stopped saying the name of the shooter. Because so much of it is about the fact that they have not been special their whole life. They got mental illness. 
They haven't felt special, and they haven't felt they felt hopeless. And somebody, somewhere, you all are gonna know. And then at another level, each person's soul has decided it's time for them to leave the body to go to the next level of their growth also. But that's hard to even begin to consider if that's someone you love and somebody that's close to you and special to you. You know, but sometimes things can be the truth and I still don't like it. So it doesn't mean that it's not the truth because I don't like it. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I remember when I first read in metaphysics and new thought that before we were born we chose our parents, our race, our sex, the general circumstances of our life and the lessons we were going to learn. Then we are born because you know sex is basically for creating bodies for souls to come in. We're the ones that decided we were just going to do it for the fun of it. Okay, and we're still innocent. But that's hard as it is for people to realize sex is basically for procreation. But we just having fun with it or guilt with it. Okay. So the point that I'm making is so souls are constantly being born into this reality that they chose to be born into to learn lessons in love. And the Course would call that many dreams. The Course would call it a dream. You're having a dream, right? See, that makes more sense to me than a story about a stork dropping me down the chimney wrapped in a blanket. But if you say stuff like, you are a soul that, that came into the physical body to learn spiritual lessons, you chose the vehicle that you were going to do it with, you chose your parents, they chose you. you all y'all collectively wanted to grow as souls to learn certain lessons. That, I can't prove that's true, but you can't prove to me about the stork thing either. See, that's why I don't spend my class focusing in on theoretical issues. But you heard me say, I could try to overlook what my father did in the past, not use this moment to recreate it again, give myself some truth so I won't think about it. See, that's practical. Now that I can prove, and you can prove to yourself that it will work. That's why I don't deal with the abstract stuff. Do I personally believe in reincarnation? Oh, sure, no way in the world that we got so screwed up in one lifetime. <laughs> Come on, y'all. You know, why do you think you have an instant attraction to some people and you can't even explain it? And even if, if it seems like it's, it, it's not even for your own best interest all the time, you find yourself in it. That's a in most cases, that's a continuation of a relationship that you've already started. Because, because this is earth school. We, the Course in Miracles says, if you were to see this place as a place where there is only healing going on, regardless of what you see, if you were to say, the only thing that's happening is a healing, he said, the Course says, you would be free of the world's laws of violence and death. You would be safer in the world. You want to know how to avoid being mugged and violence? He said the, the way you would do that is to understand that there's nothing going on but healing. And scabs are not beautiful. But if you didn't have a scab, I scraped my knee a few weeks ago. I was thankful for that scab that came on. It don't look pretty. So the earth is one big scab. That's what we're looking at. And, and so the Course is saying, so do I want to bring the past into the present? Do I want to believe all mankind is going to keep on acting the way they're already acting? If I say I believe that there's no hope because all mankind, womankind, whatever you want to call it, we messed up, we screwed up, and we're never going to do anything better, then that's bringing that condemnation and judgment into right now and perpetuating the very conflict and chaos I say I don't want. So you're not being spiritual by sitting around complaining about what's wrong with the world, which some people think that means they're being aware because they're talking about everything they're upset about and all the conspiracies and who's done this and who's done that. But I always ask one question, what are you going to do now to bring more love into this? That's why I say to people when they're talking like that, what are you going to do now to allow more peace and happiness to come into this world through you? Because I don't even want to bring Earl from my past and the things that I learned and think Earl did. I'm, I'm also going to free him from this morning, last week, 10 years ago. Because that's how you find the present. And that's where I'm going at the speed that I'm going. And I'm going to stop here. Because I want to be 
I want to keep my integrity about, about doing it for an hour. Uh, but this, I want you to just let me read the rest of this paragraph and let yourself hear it. I'm going to do it in plain language because I want you to hear this. Now, let's, just listen. That person that you're holding the past against that you just are refusing to let it go, if you keep holding on to that past, you're going to remain in the past. And so you won't let the truth that's offered you free you. I'm giving you the way out of the situation that you're in right now. But you have to accept it without limit. This will work with everybody. That's what accepting it without limit means. Right now, you're in the now. The now doesn't change. But right now, there's no sight of what you used to be. You have to tell me about what happened yesterday, last night, when you were a kid. Whatever you did in the past, there's no sight of it right now. Whatever you were in the past, nobody's seeing it right now. So when you do that, Dude, that's when you're actually looking at the innocent child of God. Whenever you look at people without their past, that's you looking at the innocent child of love. So when you're willing to look at a person without their past, then you're going to call the witnesses of loving witnesses, the kind witnesses. You're going to, you're going to, in other words, you're going to invite that loving part of that person to come out and shine on you. If I won't see you based on the past, then I could, that would allow me to see the love and the joy that you're capable of giving me and the love and the joy that you're capable of giving right now. So the once I decide to let go of a person's past, I'm going to see the witnesses to that loving person shine on me because I'm calling the loving you to come out if I'm not focused on what I think you did in the past and if I'm not condemning and judging what you did in the past. And so the person that's letting their loving self come out because now you're not holding the past against them, then they won't deny the truth in you. They'll let you know that they appreciate how kind you're being, that they appreciate how loving you're being, that they appreciate that you're letting go of the past. So they won't deny the truth in you because you look for the truth in them. I wanted to believe that there was something good about my father beyond the things that I thought I was upset about him. I wanted to believe there was a good Joe Purdy. There was a loving Joe Purdy. There was a Joe Purdy that was spirit. I wanted to see the Joe Purdy that I could love. So that means that I was willing to see the truth in that person. And the Court says, and when you really sincerely look for that, sincerely now, not sucking and diving, really sincerely want to see the good, in that person, then you will look for it in them and you will find it in them if that's what you're really looking for is the love and the good in them. If you're not looking for that, then even if they're not being cruel, you're going to still see them as being that way because seeing them as being cruel is more important than seeing them as innocent. So I'm going to stop there. Mm. All right. Okay, Earl, are you going to listen to this, Earl, at least four times? Are you going to watch this at least four times? Yes, because I want to do the practical application of this, because I have people in mind that I know I need to use this on. Because all you, you, are, you, are, you just have a bunch of lab partners in the world, and your most special relationship is your most special lab partner. That's what they are. They're your lab partner. The one you're supposed to practice this on the most is the person you say is most special to you. But I'll tell you something that you already know. They're also the hardest person to practice it on. Because they're the ones you got the biggest expectations of. <sighs> mm. See, I'm working on trying to let go of expectations rather than using my mind to try to figure out how I can get people to do what I want them to do like I used to. Like I used to, have, like I call it the creative visualizations. <laughs> and all I was doing was trying to control reality and make everything and everybody be the way I wanted them to be. Now I'm working on how can I let go of expectations because it's my expectations that always ends up disappointing me and making me mad. And I, I could be in control of my expectations where I can't be in control of that other person's behavior. So I'm lazy in the sense that I try to go for the truth that's the easiest for me to do. And what I'm finding out is the easiest truth for you to do is any work that requires you working on yourself. That's the easiest change of all change that you could possibly try to be a part of is changing you. I, trust me, you know it's true. The minute you think it's all about getting somebody else to be the way you want them to be, you have just set up a lot of work for yourself. Because you think you're not going to have what you want unless you can get it out of that person. So you don't realize that love will just give you what you want. 
if you just said, I really want to be loved and stop deciding who's to give it to you, then the universe can give you the love in the form that's ready for you today that you would really enjoy. I'll say it one more time. <laughs> when you decide on the form or who that physical being is, you've decided that love should come to you through, then you've lost the understanding of your purpose. My purpose is to be in a loving relationship. But if I decide it's got to be you and you don't want it to be you, then I'm delaying my receiving it. But if I was just to tell the universe, I really desire to be inside of what I already deserve, a totally loving relationship, where the spirit knows who would be that person today and who would also be very glad to give it to you. They, they, would, they, would, have, they would have one key quality. They would find you irresistible. So, well, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, <laughs> you can go to my website, earlperdy.com. I would surely appreciate it if you would do it. I'm a full-time teacher. And also, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, you can use, let me see, Zelle, Venmo, the Cash App, and PayPal. And you, all you need is my email address. That's Earl Purdy at EarlPurdy.com. Earl Purdy at EarlPurdy.com. P-U-R-D-Y. I'm also available for one-on-one -on -one <coughs> sessions. One-on-one -on -one sessions where I can show you, using the course, how you should approach anything that you think you're going through right now. And also, those of you who love the course and resonate to me in the way that it comes to me, I'm also available to be your personal coach. So I also do coaching. And it's also almost like a combination of a clarity session because we use the situations in your life that you're going through that you want to see differently. We actually use that as the thing we're going to solve together using the course and giving another way to do it. So I'm available for that as well as giving you clarity on situations. They're called clarity sessions. So go to my website and it explains my clarity sessions in detail and you can self-book an appointment right from the website. And Thursdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Time on Facebook Live, I do a hardcore Course in Miracles for Course in Miracles students. Hardcore Course in Miracles. Anybody can watch, of course, but all my classes are very much geared toward helping people in their study of a Course in Miracles. <clears throat> That's on the Earl Purdy page, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, Thursday night. All of my classes are uploaded to YouTube. All of my classes are uploaded to YouTube. I have years and years of classes on YouTube that you can watch in, in on a variety of subjects. I'm just here to be helpful. That's why, what I want to do. So here we go. Give me one minute. So I want you to hear this repetition, repetition for one minute. Here you go, here you go, here you go. Judgment and condemnation are behind you unless you bring them with you. Judgment and condemnation, judgment and condemnation in that situation with that person is behind you. Judgment, that judgment, that upset, that condemnation, that misunderstanding, that misperception, that happened in the past. And so unless you keep bringing the grievance with you, unless you keep bringing the past with you, you're going to see that you're free of that grievance and you're going to see that you're free of the past. You should lovingly look upon right now. You should be loving right now. You should be loving right now. You should be glad that you have a right now. Because right now frees you from the past. Because nothing that's happened to you in the past is really happened to you happening to you exactly the same way right now. So if you want to be free, 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 what should you do with that person? What you, if you want to be free, if you want to experience peace with them right now, the Course of Miracles says, remember, 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 remember only the loving thoughts. Remember only the fun times. 
Remember only the peaceful times. Earl, remember that time when your father was playing with you. Remember that time he took you to the store to, the store to buy you some of your favorite shoes. Remember how he walked in the door. When he, when he was a barber, and whenever his customers walked in, he would say proudly, this is my son, and put his hand on my head. I was eight or nine years old. Remember the loving thoughts. Remember the loving thoughts. So accept this truth that's being asked of you right now by repeating it whether you believe it or not. Don't use the excuse that you don't understand it and you don't believe it. Just use it. Tell yourself, the past is over, it cannot touch me. That's one of the Course in Miracles daily workbook lessons. Say, the past is over, it cannot touch me. The past is over, the past cannot touch me. My past is over, my past cannot touch me. In the workbook it says, uh, the past is over, it can touch me not. The past is over, it can touch me not. It tells you things, the Course of Miracles tells you things to tell yourself that changes your life. The Course of Miracles tells you the things to tell yourself to change your life. The Course of Miracles tells you the things to tell yourself to give yourself the happiness that you want and the peace that you want and the joy that you want. Don't deny yourself the peace and the joy that you want by being so lazy and not loving yourself enough to, to, uh, to, to have you to have a spiritual path that you own, something that's giving you instructions and teachings beyond what you've learned in the past and your own little personal wisdom. Don't keep hurting yourself by just trying to teach yourself. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are free. You are innocent right now. Mighty companions, may the course be with you. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for being willing to listen together. Thank you online. I'm not going to even say it this week. You, you know who I'm talking about.